This is the Pivot Lab in order to introduce you to acids and bases. And we're going to start out by looking at just some patterns. And what we're going to consider are a couple of indicators, brom all green and phenolphthalein, an actual pH sensor, as well as electrical conductivity. And what you're going to do is you're going to select which test you want to do. So for example, I'm going to pick brom um, cresol, bromocresol green, excuse me, and I'm going to press go here and then play. Remember, all of these work a little better if you expand the screen. And what they're going to do is they're going to put some of the indicator into the solutions. And what you're going to do is you're going to record the results as you see them. So, for example, on this one here, we viewed the color as we added, added the indicator. And what you're going to do is you're going to create some columns for your substances and then for what you're going to do. So for the first one here, I can take and put a column here. Again, add column right. And I can put what I need here. So if I put my Bromo Cresol green here, on my next one, I might put electrical conductivity. And I'm just going to put EC for that. And we can take and put in the results as you see them. So when we get to this point and you want to put, for example, a color. So if we go back and we look at the first one here, we notice the first one was blue. Well, you look at you can't type blue in, but you can type blue in. If you go up here to these three dots, you can go to column settings and you can go down to allow text data. And once you have done that, you don't just have to use or use numbers. You can take and you can put um, words in here. So I can put blue and I can continue going down if I get to the electrical conductivity. And I want to say, for example, that what I have in this one here, and again, I'm going to use text that I have yes or no. I can put um, text as well as numbers here in these columns. If you, when you need more columns, just continue to add columns to the right. So continuing this one down, you're going to answer some questions on what, what are um, going on in terms of the colors and the indicators. And then you're going to go look here in the next video, and you're going to play, and then it's going to show you what the substances are. So once you've seen what the substances are, what I need you to do here is I need you to take a look at the substances. So you're going to play here and they're going to tell you that the first one here is water. So I want you to make a data table here where you're going to put the substance. You're going to put the formula. You are going to take and figure out whether or not. So add another column here. It's going to be type of electrolyte. And then predicted pH and actual pH. So continue doing these. So if I put in water, and again, if I don't have selected on column settings to allow text, it won't let me put text in. But as soon as you do, you can do that. And if you put your formula and again, you take and give the option to put text in, you can type in H2O. And then you can go through and pick what type of electrolyte it's going to be and go from there. So continuing on, what kind of relationship is going to exist. So answer to that and the relationship to the pH. So the next one is we're going to look at some other substances. And we're going to take and we're going to use our indicators and we're going to tie test different substances. Now there's a whole bunch here. So for example, you can do soda or two pop, whatever you call it from the part of the world where you come from. So here we've got some Sprite and they're going to pour it in and they're going to test its properties. So your job here is to go down and create a table such that you list the substance, its pH, and whether or not you conduct, or whether or not the solutions conduct. When that's through, it's going to show you here, or what similarities you saw, and then you're going to look below, and you're going to see if your predictions were accurate. Which ones did you, rec did you rank correctly? Did you figure out the correct pH and conductivity on there? The last thing you're going to do on this one is you're going to take your solutions, and you are going to use the in, um, universal indicator as well as a um, the conductivity test to see what kind of solutions you have. Now, the universal indicator changes color as a function of solutions. So let's say I want to do the first one, which is sodium hydroxide, and they're going to put some of the solution in, give it a nice stir, add some universal um, indicator here. That was just water. Now we're adding the sodium hydroxide, and then we can take and look at its conductivity. So what this one here has is this one has tools. The rest of them don't have um, active tools. This one does. And what it gives you is a pH strip that gives you the pH meter. Now, the 
how transparent the solution is is not going to be consistent with the color. So you're just going to go off of what that color looks like. So this is more purple than anything else. And you're going to predict or state here that it's got a pH of 10 or over. So with this, what you're going to do is you're going to answer some questions because you are going to look at these solutions and you're going to ask yourself as you go through your solutions, what is required for the solution to be acidic? What is required for the solution to conduct electricity? And what is required for the solution to be basic? And at that point, you are done and you can click, click your save and close and you'll have submitted the lamp.